Hello everyone, this is Hierophania. Welcome back to my playthrough of Dragon Quest VII, Fragments of the Forgotten Past, for the 3DS. Previously, in Albalad, the party received... The Seal of the Sands. With it, they gained some additional infra they gained some additional information from the folks of Albalad. How to spot the serpent. The Wisdom of the Sands, parts 1 through 3, and the Seer of the Sands. The creature they are searching for, the serpent, has some big golden horns. And we saw a critter like that at the dig site. So we'll be heading to the dig site. Oh, I know where. We'll board our ship and head to the dig site. Hmm, some sea monsters, scarfish, and wet kissers. You guys are out of luck. Bye bye, enemies. Does some bark? And we'll head to the dig site. Of course, this is where they found that skull, isn't it? The one with the golden horns. Do you think it might have belonged to the serpent? Huh? What are we doing here? Have we come to take a look at that skull? It's amazing what you can find just by digging. When I get back home, I'm going to get my daddy's shovel and head out into the garden. I can teach you all about digging, Davalos. Here's your first tip. It's a lot faster to dig with your back legs than with your front legs. I can't get excited about archaeology. The vast majority of the stuff that's in the ground is a load of old junk. Hello? Roll up, roll up, hand over your five gold coins, and get to the back of the queue. Hmm? You just want to speak to the dock, you say? I suppose you don't need to pay, then. In you go. Try as I might, I can't seem to shed any light on the provenance of the skull. Although I'm not sure why that surprises me. I've never known quite what any of the pots and vases I've dug up over the years were for certain. I've probably made some horrendous blunders with regards to some of them, but how would I even know if I had? If only I could have been alive at the time when the owner of these magnificent horns roamed the land. Everything would make sense then. Every pot, every vase, every strange, stupendous skull. I'd give anything to visit those times. Anything at all. You don't say. Hmm? Oh, you're here to look at the skull, are you? Well, go ahead. But don't even think about touching it. Very well, Doc. Dr. Digby's Dream At the dig site where the skull has been found, the party encounter an archaeologist who's rather perplexed by its provenance. His name is Dr. Doug Digby, 
and he announces that he'd like nothing more than to pay a visit to the ancient past. It's a large skull with two striking gold horns. The horns are very, very shiny indeed. Go ahead and touch it. Yep. Boy. Get your grubby mitts away from that skull. Honestly, the youth of today. Very well, Doc. Hmm? You want to know more about the skull, do you? Well, I suppose I can't blame you. Just look at the size of it. It's enough to set anyone's mind racing. Can you even imagine how big its body must have been? Why, four grown men could probably have ridden on its back. Indeed. We found the remains of ancient fish and algae nearby, you know. My guess is that it must have been some kind of aquatic creature. And I'm no marine biologist, but we're talking river fish and algae here. I'd say this was a freshwater beast, not a, sweet, not a sea creature. But let's not get bogged down in specifics. Just look at the thing. It's glorious. Who knows how long those golden horns have been gleaming away? How many years? How many eons? Surely such a mighty beast must have been worshipped as a god. It's my theory that it was probably the chief deity of the peoples of its native land. You agree, of course, don't you? Um, sure. Good. Then I suppose talking to you wasn't a complete waste of time. Tell the archaeologist about your adventures in the desert? Absolutely. Davlos tells the archaeologist about the party's adventures in the deserts of the past. And you're telling me all this? Why exactly? Don't tell me you want my precious skull for some harebrained scheme or other, because you're not going to get it. I'm sorry. You think you might need to take it back to the past to solve a little problem there? Well, throwing time travel into the mix certainly isn't going to make your story more believable. Do you have any evidence to support these preposterous claims of yours? No, I didn't think so. Come on, own up. You're simply trying to trick me into giving you my prize find so that you can sell it on for a profit, aren't you? Ha! Huh. You'll need to do a lot better than that to catch me out. Now get out of my sight. Shoo! Okay. What? What could we possibly hope to gain by tricking him? Go on, Davalos. Show him something that we brought back from the desert. That'll wipe that stupid smirk off his face. I really can't stand talking to old people. They just go on and on and on. What was he saying? Something about it being the skull of a freshwater creature? As if we didn't already know. Looks like Dr. Gigby's in a bad mood. Maybe we, should, maybe we could show him something from the past to cheer him up. How about that thing Elder Khalid gave us? I bet he'd like that. So we'll show him that thing from Khalid. Hmm? What is it now? Don't tell me you've brought some evidence to support your ludicrous claims. Indeed we have. Davalos shows the Seal of the Sands to the archaeologist. Hmm? What's this you've got? Huh? What? My word! That pattern! It's just like the one on the fragment I found. Could this mean? This isn't a circular shape. And it's not any kind of dish, either. Ah, that must be it. But if that's the case, then... Hmm. Hmm. This is groundbreaking. Epical. This could disprove all my theories. Or perhaps not. Hmm. Hmm? Oh, I do apologize. I must confess, I forgot you were there. Now tell me, where did you find this artifact? Davalos tells Dr. Digby the story of how the seal came into the party's possession. Hmm. Well, there's no doubt that this is an ancient pattern. The tooling, however, seems to have been carried out very recently indeed. Could you really have traveled through time? It seems impossible, but it's the only explanation I can think of. No. I simply cannot bring myself to believe it. I doubt I would ever believe it unless I were to witness such a phenomenon with my own eyes. Ah, of course. If you really can travel to the past, then why not prove it by taking me there? I'll happily let you have the skull for as long as you wanted in exchange for a glimpse of the ancient world. Take Dr. Digby with you to the world of the past? Absolutely. Wonderful. Now, if you'll just give me a moment... Yes, bring that skull. Here you go. All yours. Davalos receives the ancient skull. Thank you, Doc. Davalos places the skull in the bag. And Dr. Digby... Dr. Digby joins the party. Wow. 
Welcome, Doc. All right, then, let's go. The wonders of the ancient world await. An appeal for proof. The party tell Dr. Digby all about their adventures in the past, but he refuses to believe them. If only they had some way of proving that their stories are true, it's probably the only way they're going to be able to persuade him to give them the skull. And we now have the Ancient Skull, a sizable skull belonging to an ancient creature. Really, I'm grateful for the skull, but does he have to come along as well? Woohoo! Dr. Digby's coming with us. We've made another friend. I should warn you, I can't fight or run or lift anything heavy. If you need someone to date a pot shard, however, I'm your man. Come on, then. Let's go. To the world of the past. You're the one who said the silly scholar could join us, Davalos, so it's up to you to keep him safe. I washed my hands of the whole affair. My heart skipped several beats when I first stumbled upon the site, you know. Really, I was ever so excited. But now it seems I'll actually be traveling into the past. This is beyond my wildest dreams. Never mind my heart, my whole body's quivering. Eh? You off somewhere, Dr. Digby? Well, you be careful out there, all right. And don't worry about this place. I'll make sure no one gets near... I'll make sure no one gets near your dig site. You do that, good man. Morning, Doc. What a lovely day for a stroll. Ah, you've been so very good to me. But these things can't last forever, can they? Just try to forget me when I'm gone, won't you? It'll be easier that way. But... what? Who are you? You've already forgotten. How wonderful. Goodbye, Doc. All the best to you. Eh? Huh. Those shifty merchants shouldn't be there. Huh? You're leaving? Where are you going? Don't tell me you're going to go digging somewhere else. Silly people, scholars. With Dr. Digby in tow, the party head for the Shrine of Mysteries. Welcome, Doc. Like a kid in a candy store. When they arrive at the shrine, Dr. Digby is incredibly excited and starts exploring every nook and cranny like a giddy child. In fact, he's so transfixed by the shrine that it takes a long time to persuade him to leave. Eventually, however, the party make their way back into the past and into the darkness of the desert. To the past. We're here, Doc. Oh, my! This must be the desert you were talking about. But how did we get here? Just a moment ago, we were on an island surrounded by nothing but sea. But just look at the soil structure. Deposits like this could only have been made in an era before our own, which must mean... We really are here. We're in the ancient world, by all that's holy. Now, where are the ruins you told me about? You must take me there right away. The Temple Palace? My word, the original structure remains almost entirely intact. And these patterns, this period, it must have been... Uh, oh, what's this? Hmm, hmm, C could this be? Oh! Oh, my word! This is wonderful, beyond wonderful. To see all this with my own eyes, it's... Oh, goodness, I'm rather overwhelmed. 
Take it easy there. Dr. Digby looks really happy. Is the palace really that exciting, though? Isn't he a bit old to be getting all worked up like that? Honestly, he's like a little boy in a sweet shop. Ah, that's what I said. Oh, Doctor. Mutter mumble. This, is this inscription it suggests? Yes, a festival. Mumble mutter. Which means... Hmm, are you still here? I'm busy, you know. This is no time for chit-chat. If it's about the skull, you can keep it. You don't need to bring it back. It pales into insignificance when compared to all this. Butter mumble. Very well, Doc. Finally, I thought we'd never get rid of the old codger. Ah, oh, that's a weight off my shoulders. Now come on, Davalos. Let's get going. We haven't got all day, you know. Proof positive. Our heroes show Dr. Digby the seal of the sands, which gets him terribly excited. He agrees to give them the skull if they'll promise to take him with them to the past, and so the party head back to the desert with the doctor in tow. Dr. Digby's delight. Dr. Digby can barely contain his excitement at the sight of the temple palace. In fact, he's so taken by its trove of archaeological treasures that he's perfectly happy for the party to keep the skull he gave them. Excellent. Now then. We might have found the skull, but we're hardly going to be able to ride up the river on it. I wonder if Hadid's had any more luck finding the real-life serpent. Herf, herf, herf. The people in Albalad are going to get such a surprise when they see the skull. Come on, Davalos. Let's go back to the village and show it off. Indeed. Back to the village. Hello again, Albalod. Let's go to the River Nile, Davalos. We might be able to see the serpent. Everyone's so quiet, Davalos. Has something happened? One of our village's brightest flames will soon be extinguished. Ah, but we will all one day die, I suppose. I will, you will, even the monsters will. This will never change. Hmm? You require something of me? Very well. Sounds like someone's dying. Hello there. Ah, you are the travelers, yes. Please, you must listen. The Elder collapsed a short while ago. Uh-oh. What is more, when I attempted to inform Master Hadid, he was nowhere to be found. I must stay out here in case he comes back, and yet I am filled with anxiety for the Elder. I simply do not know what to do. What does Hadid think he's doing, swanning around in the desert when his father needs him here? Is Elder Khalid poorly? I hope it isn't anything serious. Come on, Davalos, let's go and see if he's okay. I think not. How could he? How could he, at a time like this? How could Hadid abandon his father in his moment of greatest need? He is his only son. Ah, it is you. You have arrived at a terrible moment. Or perhaps I should say, you have arrived just in time. The Elder has not been able to rise from his bed since he collapsed. He can barely even open his eyes. Queen Fertiti still shows no signs of returning, and now this, we are cursed. Cursed, I say. Where is Master Hadid? And what could he be doing? Surely his father should be his priority at such a time. He has always been the type to dash off, of course, but at a time such as this, his place is here in the village. How can you say, how can you say such a thing? Hadid is trying to find a way to help his father, to help everyone in the village. Once he locates the serpent, he will be able to save the queen and all our menfolk from the monsters. And he will return shortly. Of that I am certain. Absolutely certain. The queen's already been taken by the monsters. Heaven knows what would become of this place if they lost the elder as well. 
Her lead priority at the moment must be to rescue Queen Fertiti and everyone else who has been abducted from the village, and the only way to do that is to find the Great Serpent. I, for one, appreciate what he is doing. I only hope that he has come to no harm. Just as my mistress was just beginning to feel better, the Elder himself collapses in pain. Heaven alone knows what would become of us if the monsters decided to attack at this moment. If only Master Hadid were here. I pray now to all the heavens. Please, spare the Elder's life. Do not allow him to die at a time like this. Sacred Ones and Watchers over, have your servants here below? Please, it is too soon for the Elder to join you in heaven. We have come to offer our prayers. It is all we can do. May the heavens watch over and protect our beloved Elder and the people of this humble village. I hope, I only hope that Hadid returns before it is too late. Ah, beloved Elder! Well, let's go up and see them. Elder Khalid is lying on the bed. He looks exhausted and is fast asleep. Elder Khalid looks so much bigger and stronger when we first met. Is this what the illness has done to him? Poor man. See? He's fast asleep. He isn't dying, he's just really, really tired. Right? Sorry, Ruff. I fear. I fear that this is the end for my husband. He has not been able to open his eyes since his collapse. Yes, this is it. This is his time. Please, you must pay your final respects. This is what he would wish. If only Hadid were here to do so also. Elder Khalid isn't ill, he's just sleeping. He'll finish his nap, and then he'll wake up, and everything will be all right again. For goodness sake, where has Adid got to now? It should be him paying his respects, not us. Ah, uh, here he is. But by the sands. Huh, Hadid? So Hadid's finally made it back, has he? Humph, it took him long enough. Still, he's here now, and maybe his presence will be enough to give Elder Khalid some of his strength back. Let's go and see how the old man's doing. Hadid looked really frowny. Maybe he's angry about something, or sad. Hadid, my boy, welcome home. But I fear your father. I, I. Well, do not just stand there. I, I had a strange sense that something was wrong. This is why I returned. Do you think it could have been... He could have been... Never mind. I thank you for coming to pay your respects. But do not expect a response. He breathes still, but his eyes no longer open. K khalid Father! Hadid. Dear Hadid. I am not much longer for this world. That much I fear is obvious. I am glad you have returned, and our guests from afar also. I thank you for coming. Father, please, you cannot leave us yet. The time is not right. I have yet to discover the location of the Serpent. Queen Fertiti is still far from saved. If you are not here to ensure the safety of the village, I will be unable to continue my search. So you have yet to locate the Serpent. I see. W wait, that's sparkling. What could it be? But please, the object you carry, show it to me. Qu quickly! Show Khalid the ancient skull. Certainly. Davalos shows Khalid the skull. Sh surely not. 
Hadid, do you remember the tales of the serpent, the ones you enjoyed so as a boy? How is the creature always described? With two great golden horns to top its head, yes. Can there be any other creature so endowed? Look at the skull. Look at its horns. This can mean only one thing. The serpent has long since perished. Thank you. At least now we know for certain. It is little wonder you could not find the beast, Hadid. It no longer lives. Hadid, you must end your fruitless search and take your rightful place as Elder of Abalad. But, but, Father... You must forget about the serpent. You must surely see that it is a lost cause, and while I understand your desperation to rescue the Queen, I fear that nothing can be done. We must focus instead on ensuring that we desert dwellers do not die out altogether. You must become Elder of Albalad, for this village requires your protection. You must take my place. You <coughs> must. I cannot. I refuse. You are not dying, Father. You cannot. You cannot abandon your village, your people, at a time such as this. You are our elder. You are Elder Khalid. Your work is not yet complete. No, it is not complete, which is why you must complete it, my son and heir. My wandering friends, I fear I must ask another favor of you. We desert dwellers traditionally send our elders into the next life by entrusting their remains to the loving embrace of Mother Nile. When my body is committed to the waters, I would ask that you also return the skull of the serpent to the river which gave it life. All life comes from the Nile, and it is to the Nile that it must return. I... <coughs> I... <coughs> K... Khalid! My apologies. I must ask that you leave. Poor Elder Khalid. The Elder is no more. The party returned to Albalad to find the village in a very somber mood. It seems that Elder Khalid has fallen ill. Our heroes pay him a visit and show him the skull. He tells him to place it in the Nile along with his coffin. Soon enough, the Elder breathes his last. Davalas and the others decide to leave Hadid alone with his father. Sob, I... Why? Why must I be spared? Sob. It would probably be better to leave her alone at a time like this. So let's do so. Oh. Hello, Hadid. My father is dead. I must inform the people of the village. Very well, Hadid. Ah, beloved Elder. Master Hadid appears deeply troubled. Could this mean... It has come to pass. Master Hadid must surely have good tidings to share. What other possibility is there? For now, there is nothing for us to do but pray. Never have I seen Master Hadid's face so ashen. All right, Hadid. Thank you all for it. Thank you all for assembling here. It is my sad duty to inform you that our beloved village elder, my father Khalid, is no more. Tomorrow, his body will be returned to the waters of the Nile, as tradition dictates. In the meantime, in the meantime, we shall return to our homes and make the necessary preparations. That is all I have to say for now. I will speak more in the morning. Davalos and his friends, Davalos and his friends spend a sleepless night at the elder's residence. Soft sobbing can be heard throughout the night, carried on the desert breeze. Then, morning comes.
The procession. It would appear that everyone has gathered. Very well. Let us set out for the banks of the Nile. Forward march. The banks of the Nile. We might not have been very close to Elder Khalid, but still, it's a shock when someone you know passes away. I... I don't like this. Sob. It's just too sad. Sorry, Ruff. There is no need to be concerned for Elder Khalid. He is on his way to heaven now. We'll save here. And next time... We'll start this funeral. This is Heyrat Lania. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.